The hits keep coming from the secret Ulysses North America bunker. And now I'm being joined by Bill Bridges. He's taking a break from hanging out with his brothers, Jeff and Bo, to talk about fading suns. And I am going to be the first to publicly admit that I am almost completely ignorant about fading suns. But this is a an IP that is on the near horizon from Ulysses North America, and they are going to give it the Ulysses treatment. So first off, Bill, tell me a little bit about the setting of Fading Suns. Fading Suns is set in the far future. I call it far future fantasy. It's basically a medievalish setting, feudal society, in the far future, humanity spread among the stars, created this republic of high technology. It was wonderful. It was all the science fiction utopian dreams, and then it collapsed and crashed. Okay. And so uh, it's America 2022. Yeah, exactly. It's just around the corner, man. And uh, so it, now you've got feudal lords. You've got uh, a universal church that sort of doesn't like technology. It blames it for its sins because the stars are fading. They're darkening. No one knows why church is convinced it's the sins of the second republic that's now gone and now they just have to save their souls because they're not going to be able to save the sons not everybody believes that who knows what's the reality is there. somebody forgot to pay that utility bill yeah, exactly and if you can only find the bill and get the account number right, back like, boy like the sun is back yeah whoo turn it back on all right so merchant league guilds too they control the high technology it's all secrets now that they so don't it seems very uh a lot of conspiracy a lot of uh kind of Maybe double dealing. Things yeah. Like that. Oh, it's, all, it's very Machiavellian, very scheming. Yeah. A lot of politics. You could right. see it. You know, Game of Thrones in space. I think of it as uh, Three Musketeers in space, okay. because you're you, you could play the intrepid sort of throne adjacent heroes who are like you know working around the nobles and stuff, right. and trying to do all sorts of cool things. There's lots of exploration you could do. There's outside of the known world's cultures and civilizations that are what they consider the barbarian cultures who still also have managed to somehow maintain star travel and stuff, and you can go out there and try to deal with them. There's weird aliens. There's a whole super high-tech alien culture, the Vow and the Vow hegemony. The whole thing is they've shut their borders. They don't let humans through, and they're just watching. They built a wall. And nobody knows what they want. They kind of do have that. Right. Bingo, yep. The wall worked. They built the wall, yeah. And then there are the symbiotes, the horrible, you know, corrupting creatures that humanity's fighting a war against in one place to prevent them from flooding into human space. So obviously, this is a, a role-playing game that's that's aimed at children. Yeah, I'm dead. because it's so happy and light. Absolutely, you know, killing all sorts of shape-shifting creatures is something every kid needs to if learn. You thought Tales from the Loop was a little too dark for your tastes? Yeah. Fading Suns. No. As far as the uh, the player characters, are, what sorts of Character types, what sort of archetypes are there available for the player? Uh, the main classes, we say, because it's social classes, you're playing among the elite of society. Most people are peasants and serfs, but you can play the nobles. Little the people. Noble, yeah, the little people. The nobles are the noble houses. There's the sects and orders of the universal church. They go from crazy occultist types to inquisitorial types who love to burn people with their flame guns mm -hmm. to the healer types, and then there's the more uh, sermonizing types. Then there's the merchant league. They control the high technology, the charioteers guild or the pilots guild. You pretty much can't travel the stars without them handling all the jump gates, which are these ancient alien artifacts left behind by a long gone race that allow you to do star travel. There's the Engineers Guild, the Scravers. Are, they're officially reclaimers. They go through these the ruins of the old civilizations and reclaim tech. They're a Thieves Guild. Everybody knows it. They're trash pickers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mercenaries Guild, things like that. And then there's... That sounds really in-depth. Now, Fading Suns uh, is not new. I mean, this is a new no, edition coming no. out. I, I can't be familiar with every game, folks. But when did, when did Fading Suns originally come out? It's It's been a while. Fading Suns originally came out in 1996. There we go. It premiered at uh, Origins and immediately in Gen Con. It came out around the same time as a tactical computer game we were working on, strategy game, Emperor of the Fading Suns. And that chronicled what were called the Emperor Wars, where all the noble houses were fighting to see who was going to be the Emperor. And the role-playing game assumed one person won and we took off from there that was our continuity but when you go back and play emperor of the fading suns you can play in different outcomes you could have an entirely different house win sure. or and so forth so you can make your own alternate history so we are obviously going to see a core book 
are you at liberty to discuss maybe some other products that may be coming out around the same time? Or? Well, I can't tell you when they're coming out. We're still I working on the schedule. But uh, I will say if everybody dutifully backs this stuff and buys the stuff like they're supposed to, we'll get the long-awaited War in the Heavens Pantheon, which reveals a lot more about that lost alien race who built everything, left it behind for humans to use. So it's all up to you. Yes, you out there. If we get to see Fading Suns, listen to this. You're, you're basically threatening these poor folks. Why? If they want War in the Heavens, they'll have to if play want, the game. If you guys want it, <laughs> got to back it. What are some other things about Fading Suns you'd like to share? Oh, geez. Because I'm sure oh. it's going to be pretty much a new property to a lot of people. Yeah. It's been out of print for a while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's been out of print for about six years now, I guess it is. You know, the last one came out at that time. And there wasn't a lot of change between that one and the previous edition. So okay. it hasn't had a big update in a while, especially it didn't have a rules update. And people are playing role-playing games very differently now. So this yes. one will add a lot more of the kind of things I think the industry's gotten better at. You know, lots of player agency and stuff. So you'll have a lot of points to spend however you want to right. to do all sorts of different things. And uh, but, and yet, still, the basic system will be familiar to those who've played it before. The characteristics and the skills will, okay, I recognize those. And so some of the dynamics will be there. It'll be easier to convert people from their old characters if they've had a campaign going a long time ago. And, uh, yeah, that's... Mechanically, is it uh, a relatively? Because to me, it seems like a lot of the the products that are coming out outside of say like the Dark Eye from Ulysses, they're going a little more rules light. I'm not saying super rules light. I'm just saying they're they're avoiding just excess crunch to focus more on story. Is this well? Fading Suns comes out of a more storytelling style tradition. I came out of White Wolf where I had done the World of Darkness and all that. So there's a sense in which Fading Suns has uh, that legacy certainly coming into it and stuff. And uh, so I try to have the rules be not too crunchy. It's a D20 system. Everybody recognizes a D20. It's kind of the archetypal die. And uh, the simplicity of it is you add your characteristic to your skill together. You roll that number or less on a d20. The twist is you want to roll as high as you can without rolling over. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, you have no control over that because it's not a bell curve or anything. It's just mm-hmm. a straight mm-hmm. die. So sure. you're praying, and that's where the pan creator, the universal god of the Spadingson's universe, comes in. Pray the pan creator we make that roll. <laughs> if you roll the number you need exactly, that's your critical hit. Okay. If you roll your a 20, it's the reverse from the traditional standards, that's the one you don't want. So even though Critical Hit is great in other games, you don't want that in Fading Suns. So as far as, like, say, uh, difficulty level, as far as the, uh, the Game Master itself, so you're saying that in order to succeed in an action, whatever it may happen to be, you got the D20, it's attribute plus skill, mm-hmm. or characteristic plus skill, right. and if you roll uh, as close to it without going over... Kind of like uh, Price is Right. We used to call it the Price is Right system. I also call it in the more mythological vein the Icarus system. Yeah, right. Because you're don't fly too high. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what about the... The thing uh, is, when you do make the roll... How do you, how's the adjustment work with that? So let's say, um, of course, somebody with a shooting skill is going to have much easier time shooting something right next to them as opposed to needing to kind of be a marksman to take right. something out. So the yeah. difficulty does change. How is that accounted for? Uh, what it is is when you roll that number or less, you've gotten a hit, and now you have to contend against the resistance of the thing. Oh. So if the conditions are bad and your vision is bad, the resistance might go up. But some conditions will actually affect that number, too, and might raise it or lower it. But for the most part, it's a resistance. And uh, the reason we work with that number is because the number you roll on that die when you succeed is the number of victory points you get. And you get to spend those victory points to overcome resistance. And once you've overcome resistance, you can do impact, which is your weapon does its base damage, and then you can spend more victory points to increase the damage from there. You can also spend points to, say, add to your uh, next die roll. You know, to make it even easier to hit with that. Uh, in certain situations, like, oh, my God, I really need to make this roll, and I failed it. Uh, you can spend some victory points to turn it into a success, sure. but you don't get victory points on that roll right. anymore. But you also get to collect these victory points, the ones you don't spend, and keep growing your bank sure. as the scene goes on. At the end of the scene, though, whoop, they all go away, except what you can put in your vault. And your vault, actually, the more your characters grow and improve, their vaults will grow. Sure. 
better expertise or more experience, then of course yeah. they're going to be able and to bank be able, more. And they'll have more of those. So they'll be a little more dangerous when you hit them. They can spend that on their resistance. So sure. they avoid you more, more damage. And there's all sorts of other effects you could get. There's uh, you know, perquisites everybody has. They can buy and some of those involve the manipulation of those victory points. For instance, one of the things all the priests can do is they can give anybody else their victory points so they can spend it as they need. Whereas like a noble, you know, once every once in a while, uh, if someone is, we have a social combat system. If someone is really trying to uh, imp- overcome him, make him afraid or make him do something or, you know, even just trying to befriend him and he doesn't want it. He has a special ability to uh, spend resistance, but instead of from his bank, he gets to draw from the main well and stuff. So it's okay. not costing him anything, and that's the noble, imperious right. sense. And uh, whereas the little people have to deal with the, you know, taking it from their own vaults and, and right. their own banks. Exactly. Although one of the character types, uh, there's a guild of bankers and lawyers, the Reeves Guild, who kind of secretly run a lot of these things. Nothing happens without them loaning stuff to people. And they have some interesting extra abilities if you choose certain of their callings that are associated with them that allow them to like tax other people and stuff for their victory points. And so they basically can grab a lot. It seems like a pretty fun aspect and, and different. If you could actually be a Machiavellian secret mover and shake behind the scenes, and you're not out there hitting Within people, your own group. right? Exactly, <laughs> and you're kind of the secret guy running things, and you know everybody else thinks it's that noble over there. No, it's the banker over right. here. It's the money. It's always the money guy. Always the money. Any final thoughts that you'd like to share with the audience about the upcoming Fading Suns? That unfortunately we don't know when. The responsibility is on your shoulders, folks. All right. We could say, you know, late fall is what we're looking at for a Kickstarter. So get on board because uh, the more of these we do, the more product we can make and the more we can move to the War in the Heavens Pantheon, plus all the other cool stuff we want to do. There's a lot of secrets in Fading Suns. It's a whole big giant onion. You just got to keep peeling it. And uh, you, want, you want to finally get to that really stinky center. Yeah, exactly. It stinks. Uh, well, so, thank yeah. you so much for taking some time out here to join me in the secret Ulysses North America bunker to talk Fading Suns. Thanks a lot. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.